Food Network, here's Bob Madden. And Bob Tushman. Thank you very much. Um, we just have a couple slides to talk a little bit about Food Network and our digital strategy, and then we'll get into the Q&A. Um, this is all about how we extend the story at Food Network into digital. And at Food Network, uh, our mission is to connect everyone to the joy and power of food, and we try to do that across every platform. Um, and what makes us unique is we do that by inspiring people to cook and also entertaining them through food. So I came with just a couple fun facts about Food Network and digital that you may or may not know. Um, one of them is that mobile, and I'm sure you'll hear this everywhere, but it really hit food, I think, very early. Mobile continues to outpace our imagination every single day with 52% of our page views coming from mobile devices. And now we're seeing video really fly through mobile as well. Whenever we do these extensions of TV shows, the number one source of video viewing is on a smartphone. So it's really become the second screen in the living room. Social has become huge. Food Network alone reached 17 million, has a social footprint of 17 million. Food is very social, and so is Food Network, and we're seeing more and more interaction every single day. Again, seeing tremendous success in video, which is new to us uh, on Facebook. People love our apps. We not only entertain, we inspire, and we have a great cooking app that people use in the kitchen to help them, uh, inspire them, and help them learn what to, uh, help them cook in the kitchen. Uh, for those who don't know, Alton Brown has the most popular recipe that's ever been on Food Network, which is macaroni and cheese, uh, which is a fantastic recipe. And also, uh, his roasted turkey is always number one at Thanksgiving. So if you need any help this year, that's where you should go. Um, and for those of you who remember all the powerhouses of Food Network, uh, there's been a little re-ranking of the talent, uh, and Pioneer Woman is now the most popular uh, show in our cooking television as well as uh, on the website. We have the most convergent audience in cable outside of news and sports. We drive more people from television to our food, uh, to our digital properties than any other network. A lot of that comes because we do so much inspiration in cooking and there's recipes, uh, but we also do a lot to complement uh, the, the television shows that run in prime time, uh, which we're gonna talk about next. Um, the most popular digital extension we do, and when we think we're at our best, is around Food Network Star. There's tons of digital content that complements everything that happens on television. You know, bios of all the contestants behind the scenes, the cooler room interviews. Uh, but this year we also ran a parallel series called Star Salvation, where as contestants were kicked off, they went um, and sat with mentors and helped them come back into the show towards the end of the season. And one contestant emerged, um, Luca, and he made it to the finals. And we did a live vote um, through digital, where unfortunately he did not win. Uh, but it was incredibly convergent, and content was just flying from linear to digital to social. Um, it's really our, uh, our best convergent experience that we do every year. Uh, but we do others. Uh, we have Chopped After Hours, which is a really great digital extension of Chopped where we turn the basket on the judges, so the judges have to actually cook what's in the basket. They have a ton of fun doing it, and you can really see why they're judges. The talent and creativity they bring is mind-blowing. Uh, Cutthroat Kitchen, we have a show called Alton, Alton's After Hours, where Alton explains to the judge the sabotages he put all the fans through. You'll see we're going to show a sizzle reel. There's some really fun examples of that. But the show isn't really complete until you see this after hours show, because when the judge sees how these people rose to the challenge and still put out delicious food really blows their mind. We, do, we also do things like Rachel versus Guy. We did a kids' winter series, so we also use video to extend shows after the show ends in linear. We try to keep the show going uh, on digital platforms. And then upcoming, we have a holiday baking show with Duff, uh, and that's really great, because Duff's coming back to the network. Uh, and Duff is actually going to do a video extension of every single episode and where he would take the winner's solutions to an extreme. And if you know Duff at all, you would know those would be quite extreme. Uh, so with that, I'm just going to show a little sizzle reel of some of the um, digital extensions, and we'll go from there. Greetings. Welcome to Star Salvation. Just when you thought it was over, you get another chance. I am happy to say that one finalist has indeed achieved salvation. 
Do you mm. like chicken and waffles? I do. This is what went in to your pate. Ah! Holy! You can't say that on the internet. <laughs> Come on, buddy, get up there. Congratulations. <laughs> and I gotta tell you, crazy. This is real deal. Watch out what you wish for, you just may get it. If you guys would, would like to see a little more of our thing? happy, shiny faces, uh, go to Food Network slash Thanksgiving Hangout. But we're going to be talking about leftovers. She <laughs> takes more leftovers home from people's other homes. <laughs> It's chopped after hours. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, woman. Oh. That is awesome. Please, I urge you to remember that this recipe and others are available on foodnetwork.com. Foodnetwork.com. Foodnetwork.com slash chops. That's how you do it, suckers. Thank you. Joining the Bobs is Hill Holiday's Guy Rancourt. Guys, we really appreciate it. Thank you. So, you know, we're seeing a lot of this, you know, this transmedia, as it's called, these companion shows, you know, the, the after show, if you will, this phenomenon has become ubiquitous. You know, everybody's got them. Discovery, <laughs> Lifetime, FX, you know, TLC, MTV, right down the line. Everybody's got one of these, uh, or many of these shows. Um, how are yours different than theirs? Um, I think it starts with um, what I was saying earlier is we do two things. We both inspire people to cook, and we use these digital extensions to do that. And then we also attempt to entertain them um, through, entertain them through the eyes of food. And what we do that, it, for us, it always starts with the show and the storyline of the show, and we try to continue that online. We don't do any, a lot of B footage or behind the scenes. I think what we're trying to do differently is the show doesn't end when it ends on television. It continues digitally. We try to take the core of that story and extend it into digital platforms um, in a unique way that's right for the digital audience. Um, I think that's what's special about what we do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I think we want you to feel like when the show ends, that's just, you're sort of halfway through the story then, and you have to go get the rest of it online. So for something like Chopped After Hours, what's so fun about it is you get to see the, um, uh, all of the judges, who are actually expert chefs in and of themselves, be put through the same paces that they just put all the contestants through. So they have to deal with the same baskets, and like, okay, smart guy, how would you deal with it? So it's a really fun thing to see. It's sort of like you know, seeing the answers in the New York Times crossword puzzle the day later. Ah, this is how they would have done it, because they come up with the ideas. Yeah. And, and that's really an unusual take, because you never see a lot of these other shows putting their hosts through the rigors of what the contestants have to do. You never see a Jeff Probst having to do a, a challenge. <laughs> you never see you know, Andy Cohen having to, do, having to get wine thrown in his face, for instance. <laughs> why, why put the judges on the spotlight like well, that? Well, one of the fun things for us is we are a talent-driven network. So people, we are a uh, passion brand. And the talent is really how people develop their passion for the brand. So the great things about these after shows is you get to see the talent in a totally different way. They're unplugged, they're loose, they're relaxed. They've had a couple cocktails after the show ended. <laughs> they're really having fun. And as a fan, you get to see them in a way that really uh, makes them really endearing to them. You get to, it's almost like you know, reading their private tweets. Right? Yeah. In addition, I think our, our talent is so talented. They all come from such an incredible food place. Um, and not always is that what they're talking about on television, but in digital, um, you are seeing their expertise come to life. There's a reason they're on television. Um, they're just so talented and so creative, and sometimes we're just giving them a format to show that off, which really helps the fans, it helps the brand, it helps everybody. Right. So, I mean, it, it seems like you're, you're certainly, you're creating content. You know, the, a lot of your competitors, it's simply set up a table, a round table discussion, put a host in there, put a couple of the people from the shows in there, and just kind of rehash linear storylines. It's got to be really cheap to do that. It seems like it's a little bit more costly the way you guys are doing it. Why not go for the low-hanging fruit? <laughs> well, I think it doesn't work as well for our audience. Um, I think the kind of programming we do, um, A, I don't think it'd be very interesting to hear people just talk about what they would have done with eggplant. I think our, <laughs> our, our uh, programs are about people doing things, building things, creating things, making over things, changing things. Um, watching the kind of program you want to see uh, people in the digital space do the same thing. You don't want to see them just talking. 
Yeah, we also don't want to just give leftovers. Uh, as Bob was Bad. saying, a lot of our um, other brands, um, you know, take B-roll things that were left on the editing room floor and put them online. That's fine. That works for some of them. Um, we don't find that very interesting. I don't think it works as well for our fans. Um, we want to give them a new experience. Sure. And it's more just devil's advocate trying to trying to put you on the spot there because <laughs> you know, as you know, representing our clients, we want more content. We want more places to do more interesting things. Um, so I would direct to you: Are there things that you can do digitally that you can't do on TV with these uh, with these extensions that you have? Uh, I think so. Um, I think what we try to do is explore new ideas and do some experimentation. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things we did recently, or we talked about for years, is healthy content works really well in digital. It doesn't always make the most compelling uh, television show. So we partnered with Bobby Flay, and we did a show called Bobby Flay Fit, because everywhere Bobby Flay went, people you know, how are you so skinny? How do you maintain your weight? You're around food all the time. And he actually had these, he developed these uh, rules that helped him manage uh, his weight, because he saw himself on television once and thought he looked a little overweight and upset him. So he, he kind of developed these rules. We turned that into a digital series. Very, very successful digitally. Uh, and now we're working with our TV counterparts to, to bring it to air. Yeah. Um, so it, we, what we get to do different from television, I think, is experiment at a little bit lower stakes. Mm -hmm. We have a little bit, that gives us a little longer time to find an audience, build a social following. Um, and when great stuff emerges, uh, we can, you know, television is right there to make it amplify it, make it even bigger. Another example is that is Chopped After Hours, which you saw where the judges have to cook, is so popular online, we said, I wonder if it would actually work back on TV. So we act, and they're short, you know, they're uh, eight mm -hmm. to 10 minutes. So we actually took, or less actually, mm -hmm. five to six minutes. We actually took three Chopped After Hours, packaged them together and put it back on TV uh, after an episode of Chopped and it actually worked beautifully. So the experimentation that we get to do in digital actually has benefits back on TV. And other benefits for sponsors is, is more kind of where I was going with that, oh, with that questioning. Sorry. Is there things that we can do for, for our clients and for advertisers that you can do digitally that aren't maybe available on TV or are cost prohibitive to do on TV? Um, I think so. We, we definitely work with advertisers to extend any sponsorship in television to any of these linear extensions. Uh, sometimes we do things in digital that are for digital advertisers only for that reason. I think sometimes uh, things are expensive in television. Maybe we can do it in digital. Um, and we have other uh, tools available to us in digital, like how we might, you know, work in social together with a with an advertiser, or how we might, um, you know, think about theming the content and brainstorming different ideas to work with an advertiser. Um, we don't really have different rules in television, uh, but we sort of have different tools to work with. And we also have the magazine, which has 11 million readers every month. So we have, besides uh, digital and social and TV, we have a magazine too, which is pretty unusual and uh, powerful in our in our panoply of tools. Got it. Um, so let's talk about social for a minute. So the, yeah. these after shows that you air digitally, and, and the majority of yours seems like they're they're more on the digital side. Mm -hmm. You maybe have one or two that you kind of kind of transfer it over to the, to the TV side. Yep. Um, is there a, a correlation between these shows and and the linear side? You know, is the social driving the ratings? Is there is there some sort of a, a connection there that you that you usually kind of you look for a tipping point? Um, I said, w one of the things when you think about social is it's really helped inspire a lot of these shows. A lot of what we heard in social uh, was those, you know, <coughs> Alex is pretty snarky about that basket. Who is she and, and, and how can, you know, where these opinions come from? I'd like to see her tackle that basket. Mm -hmm. um, it's a funny segue about Chopped is half the people in social media are rooting for the basket and the other <laughs> half are rooting for the contestants. <laughs> um, so that's sort of what inspired us to even create that create that extension. Um, and I do think some of the digital buzz that we create from it um, then helps back to the show. Because we now have pieces of content that we can air and have, you know, have conversations about all week long, uh, which is keeping those shows you know, in the social dashboard and in, in the conversation people are having. And I think Star is a great example of that. When you have a show that airs you know, just on Sunday nights, and we can release content throughout the week that's going to spark social conversations, keep that franchise on people's mind, um, it's going to benefit ratings. Yeah, I don't, I, it's hard to have tangible ratings. Mm -hmm. Say yes, when we do this much social, we get this much ratings benefit. Sure. Um, but I think it's very clear to all of us that in the kind of uh, uh, fan buzz that uh, Bob and his team can generate through social and digital, it definitely pays back to the show. There's just no question. <clears throat> which raises another question. So what, which comes first? Do you have an idea first? Do you know, 
here's a show that we think we can extend digitally, or is it, here's a great digital concept, let's make a show around it? Like, what, what drives what? Is it, is it a digital following that then you decide, hey, wow, this show is really taking off, we get this huge you know, social response, let's, let's do something with that, or is it simply the ratings for this are taking off? Let's get something on, you know, online so that we can complement it, or, or is it just the concept? Is it just sometimes just a simply, here's a concept we think is, is something that could really give us some legs, let's do everything we can around it? Well, I think it, it almost always starts with the show. I mean, we have to have a concept that we think is going to really work for our viewers in a really big way. Um, but as soon as we get the show idea in, we work with the digital folks right off to say, because you have to do it while you're filming the show. You don't want to do it as an afterthought later. So sure. in the conception and development of the show, we work very closely to figure out what is going to be the digital extension online, and especially for shows we think have the most uh, e excitement potential. Um, we definitely want digital to be part of it. It has to be part of it. Absolutely. Yeah, so the example I used of even Bobby Flay Fit, that's the exception, not the rule. You know, occasionally we'll see what people are responding to in digital and try to uh, come up with something from scratch, but day in and day out how we work together is it starts with the great storytelling of television, a great TV concept first, and then we figure out what the digital extensions are. And I think what's great about our brand is they're just so natural because sometimes it might be extending a big personality and there's just you know not enough time on air for that personality to express themselves. But sometimes it's also explaining the how-to or going into detail about what they were cooking and how to make it better. Uh, so there's just always a very natural digital extension to our type of content. Yeah. While the primetime shows are primarily entertainment, there's always takeaway and how-to embedded in them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so for people who really are watching and really do want more of the how-to, it can always go online. And the uh, example that you talked about with Holiday Baking Championship, which is coming up, um, Duff Goldman, who's the host of the show, who was the star of Ace of Cakes, goes online after every episode and shows you what he would have done, similar to Chopped After Hours. Yeah. So it's great. If you want the takeaway, it's always there for you. So are there learnings that you've, that you've experienced from some of the shows you've done and some of, the, you know, some of these offshoots that have kind of uh, fueled future iterations or, or how you plan um, you know, other programs? I, I think the big learning for us is is that the B-roll didn't work, yeah. and I think you know in the years past we we did the we get, get us some B-roll, send get, get some behind the scenes um, footage, and you know that's just not compelling enough to get people to pick that device up off their couch sure. and go deeper. Mm -hmm. So it was extending the stories and really creating original stories, you know that. that that has been successful. For they would always come to us and say, like, you know, what great stuff did you leave on the editing room floor? And we said, nothing. We put the great <laughs> stuff in the show. Right. So there really was like nothing great to to give them. And I think that's yeah. when they start saying, okay, what can we create that's going to be as compelling as the show? Sure. All right, we're going to um, switch over. We'll do a little bit of uh, Twitter Q and A, okay. sponsored by Tap Ad. Um, so we have a question from Stephen: Is Food Network coordinate? Well, no, we don't. We have a question from Noah: <laughs> Would you consider letting digital users become co-creators? What gets in the way in sharing that creative control? Um, I, I think we would, absolutely. We, we are co-creators in social, and um, I mean, this probably isn't exactly what you're getting after, but if you look at the recipes on Food Network and the uh, comments that we get on recipes and the feedback and the ratings and reviews, that makes that content 100 times better than when it's alone. And a lot of that's driven by a celebrity created that recipe, but the iterations that people do to it make it fantastic. And a lot of times, you know, inside my world, people are like, oh, recipes are a commodity, everybody has recipes. Um, if you look at a recipe on Food Network, it's special not only because it's Bobby Flay's recipe, it's special because there's 5,000 ratings and reviews of passionate food fans that make that piece of content even more interesting. Um, so I think we will continue to explore that idea in video and photography and, and other ways to, to do more co-creation. Mm -hmm. um, we're just at the beginning, but I think it'll be very natural for us. All right. Um, we did have another question, but it seems to have gone away. <laughs> um, so I think we're good. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Great. Thanks.